how many volts she'll have after X hours. The question was how many hours have to go by before she doesn't have a fraction of a bowl left over. Daniela? Five hours. Five hours. How'd you come up with that eight? Um, because every time hour, every hour she has three and one fifth bowls made. Okay. So if one fifth of a bowl is um, made every hour, then it would take five hours to make one fifth <coughs> bowl. She's always got an extra fifth, and after two hours, she's got an extra two fifths, an extra three fifths, an extra four fifths, and when she has an extra five fifths, well, all of that makes up one bowl. Anybody go another route? Come up with the, the same answer a different way? First? Well, I guess I just kind of saw five, and you take five times five, and it'll cancel it out. And just five times five is 25? <coughs> well, like it'll cancel out the division. Like 16 divided by five times five cancels the five out. Okay, so you just said, uh, look at this function. It says 16 fifths times x if x is 5 yeah. or 1. Then 5 divides 5. Yeah. And we're left with 16. Okay. 16 plus the 7 she started with. And she has 23. Okay. We can just look at the pattern. We can just say, okay, well, we've got 3 and a fifth plus seven, right? So uh, I guess just kind of going like this. Uh, plus three, that's too small of a three. Three and a fifth, right? And then plus another three and a fifth. Plus another three and a fifth. Plus another three and a fifth. Plus, we're almost there, just one more. Mm -hmm. Let's see. You would be multiplying the seven by whatever, which you don't want to do. Yeah. Right. So we'll add another three and one fifth for the next hour. So we see one, two, three, four, five hours go by, and we know this there's a fifth, there's a fifth, there's a fifth, there's a fifth, there's a fifth. All those fifths go together, and we get one bowl. Right? So we have seven plus one, two, three, four, five, five times three, that's 15, plus five times one fifth, that's one. And so again, we're at 20. Uh, I was just saying, because since you already know what the amount of volume is, because you just take 3 times 5, 3 plus 15, and then add the 1, which the 5 fifths make, right. and then add 7. So you're saying that right there. Yeah. Yeah. So, but you moved down. So, so we've come up with it a couple different ways. 23 bowls. Right. After, yeah, after 5 hours, she's got a total of 23 bowls. <coughs> And, and we can look at it as uh, three and one fifth ceramic bowls or 16 fifths ceramic bowls every one hour, or a ratio that's a little easier to wrap your head around is 16 bowls every seven Every five. Five, right? Look at this. Here's the 16. Then we got after five out. We just plug five in there. The uh, Clint's approach. We just see sixteen bowls here after five hours. Add on to seven. Sixteen bowls every five hours. So sixteen fifths of a bowl, or sixteen fifths of bowls every one hour. That's kind of weird. It's a fraction. It gets a little bit left over. But if we go five hours, we see sixteen bowls. So we get sixteen bowls every five hours. The ratio of sixteen bowls in five hours. <coughs> so, if we were to translate this to a graph, which we are now. Wait, can you go back real quick? I just want a little bit of a bite. So, how many, how many hours will it be? So, where did the 23 come in from? So if we were to plug five hours in here, you see I have five divided by five yeah. is one, we get 16 
plus the 7 takes us up to 23. Oh, but then how did you get 16 bowls down at the bottom? This is just the ratio of how many bowls we see for however many hours. You start with 7, and after that, for every 5 hours that go by, we increase by 16 bowls. 5 more hours, 16 more bowls, 5 more hours, 16 more bowls, and so on and so on and so on. So shouldn't it be 23 bowls? Oh. Nope. We don't get 23 bowls every five hours. We get, right, we have seven even before we start. If we, have, if we don't do anything at all, we have seven bowls, oh. right? And yeah. then we just start adding 16 bowls every five hours, okay? Which is easier to think about than 16 fifths of bowls every one hour, right? It's easier to think 16 bowls every five hours. So if we were to graph Darlene's progress over x hours, right? At zero hours, how many bowls does she have? Seven. 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 Right, seven all together. Five hours later, instead of going one hour and trying to add three and one fifth bowls, she has to move that right on. Let's just jump five hours into the future and go up how many bowls? Twenty-three. Go up twenty-three. Oh. Go 16 to 223. Okay, so let's see if we can uh, get this kind of semi. Do you like go five right? If we did, though, then our, our the slant of it would be off. We don't like that. So that's uh, 20, 21, 22, 23. And up we go. It's 23. So that's accurate? No. But it's close enough. Okay, so five hours later, she will have made 16 more bowls. You add that onto the seven she started with. She's at 23 bowls. Okay, and when we draw the line, what we're really drawing is, what am I really drawing when I draw this line? Uh, the pattern. The pattern. The pattern of the graph. All the infinite not. number of points, the pattern of the, you know, I'm just saying, all right, all the points are going to follow this pattern, so let me draw all the points all at once by drawing this line. Can you introduce, um, for the answer, <coughs> Uh, yeah, I guess you could have been yeah. okay. like that. Or you could have said five sixteenths hours and then you would have just one bowl. Oh, right? Okay. But I was banking on most people assuming that we're going to talk about whole numbers of hours bigger than zero hours. Okay, I understand. But it is, that is true, that is correct. So I'm going to Sorry for interrupting. No, sorry. Are we allowed to use the formula that Clint used, like for the 16 fifths, just times it by five once, or just the bottom number and then put that on the top? Uh, it's not really a formula that Clint uses. It's more like an observation. Yeah. And it's, uh, but yeah, like I would encourage you to. That's what I was hoping we would all, you know, get together and uh, observe. Okay. That that would that like, not work sometimes because it could be a smaller number that would work. Like if the bottom is 10 and the top was like 10, like you could. Well, if it was 10 over 10, that'd be 1. Oh, like, you know, if there was some fraction, though. 3 over 10? Yeah. Or, yeah, that's more. Hey, Mr. Stewart, yeah. I have a question. So, if it was, so for 1, what would it be? Well, for 1, we know how to get the, okay. So, we have an x of 1, that's what you suggest. We always know how to find the y, we plug the x in. Okay. Oh, yeah, sorry. And then, it's perfectly, Fine and accurate and, and, and true and correct and everything. It's just that we get that 16 fifths plus 7, then we're going to have to write 16 fifths plus 35 fifths, and then we're going to get uh, 40, 51 fifths, 10 and 1 fifth. Okay, so I come over here, I go to 1 for x and go to 10. Ooh, my graph is 10 and 1 fifth. Pretty close. It's a little off. It's a little off, but I mean, it, it's pretty close. So there would be a point approximately. Uh, who there? Well, couldn't you just take it as like as how that she did it? Like, what was it? Three and what was the after? Three and one fifth bowls for every hour. Yeah, couldn't you just like line it up, add it on to seven? You're good, it would be the same thing, right? Move over to the, the first hour, add three and a fifth more bowls, you're at ten and a fifth. Right. Same thing. Okay. And I could keep doing that. And I could keep going over one hour and up three and a fifth, over one hour, up three and a fifth, over one hour, up three and a fifth, over one hour. 
In the end, I will have gone over a total of five hours and up a total of 16 goals, right? which is what we see here. Right? Moving up a three and a fifth, three and a fifth, a three and a fifth, a three and a fifth for five hours. Right? And we get up a total of 16 more goals for a total of 23 goals in all. The thing that I wanted you to see is that moving over one hour and up three to fifth bowls is true, but kind of, you know, you're trying to have to guess at where three to fifth is. You can't be quite accurate. If I had a better grid here, I could have much more accurately hit five hours and 23 bowls, which is just 16 bowls up from seven. And now I've got myself a graph. So what I'm trying to get you to see is, is what the uh, Ben said, and what Bridger asked, you know, can we just do that? Yeah, absolutely, we can just do that. We can just go over this many, right? And we're going to be left with this many more added on to this, right? So let's give that a try. Let's do that again for this function. Okay, you, you can put a story to it, three-fourths of a bowl every hour, three bowls every four hours. Or you can just look at it as a graph, y equals three-fourths x minus two. Who wants to graph it? Yeah, I want you to graph. What would be the easiest point to find on this graph? One. Even? Four. Zero. Zero. Zero for x, right? Plug in zero for x. And what do we get when we plug in zero for x? Negative two for y. You didn't even have to try, right? You saw that this term goes away because three four times zero is zero. Minus two is negative two. There we are, right there. Now we could go over one and up three fourths. Okay, we put us right about there. But then we're kind of guessing, and uh, we're probably pretty guessing, at, good at guessing where three fourths is. Um, but we're a lot better at putting whole numbers down there. I'm trying to make my point a little better there. Okay. So I could go over one and up three fourths from there. So up three fourths from there would be negative one and one fourth. But it would be a lot easier to go over how far? Four. To four, right? Four. Four times three fourths. So four is going to get divided by that four, right? We're going to get three minus two. We've got a one there. So we put, sorry, we put a four in and got out a one. I'll show you the positive word. Four, positive one. Positive four, positive one. Three fourths times a four. Just showing you the word here. Minus two, four divides four, we got three, minus two is one. So we can go over to four, so it's one. Right. So much easier to put a point right on the grid, right, right where four and one meet, rather than trying to guess where three fourths is. But if you got three over one then, minus <coughs> two, wouldn't that be one over one? I don't know. Three over one. Minus two. Three divided by one is three. So three minus two is one. Yeah. But I have to see. That's what I was getting at. Okay. Line's drawn, but that's not too bad. So I've drawn all of the points, right? All the infinite number of points that I can fit inside this window. There they all are. Should see that if I move over one, two, three, four more, it should go up three more. There we are. There's a point right there. In that place. If I start here and I go back four, one, two, three, four, I should just move down three, but I didn't draw my line on that. Here. So we move back one, two, three, four. It should move down three. There we are. Back four, move down another three. Again, and so on. So uh, we can think of it as uh, as bowls and hours, right? Four hours go by, and how many bowls do we gain? One. One. <coughs> no, two. One. 
You start down here. Um, you go four hours. How many more bowls are there now? Three more bowls. So we move over four hours, gain three bowls. Move over four hours, gain three bowls. Over four hours, three over four, three over four, three. So this is what we call our slope. Okay, that's one word we give it. What name we give that pattern. Okay, we've been talking about this other way, or this other word here, rate. Rate of change. We can call this this horizontal thing, we can call it hours and call this bowls, we can call this hours and call this cakes, we can call this people and call this bananas, like whatever the exchange rate is, the rate of change. We see the horizontal change here, four, right, and the vertical change here, three. So if there's more people than one banana? There will be three bananas according to this ratio. I guess, it, how many would there be? I guess there, yeah, so it would be one banana, but we would have gained three bananas from before. So we've got the vertical change over the horizontal change. All these things are synonymous. We've got this slope, we've got the rate of change, we've got the vertical change versus the horizontal change. The vertical variable we usually call y, so we could call it the change in y over the change in x. And the Greek letter we use for change is delta, it looks like a little triangle. That's rate of change, the triangle means rate of change. Well, the triangle means change, and the fact that we're dividing one unit by another it gives it a rate. Right? A rate needs to be basically a, a fraction, miles per hour, people per Bananas per people, bowls per hour, houses per people, houses per people. <laughs> anything for anything, right, can be a rate. Pretty. I don't know that you have carte blanche to just put anything over anything. But maybe. Hmm. How did you get four? I mean, eight four. How did I get eight four? Eight yeah. four. Well, we could just plug in eight. I gain three y's, right? How do you gain three y's? Well, if I start from this point and I move over four, then I know I just go up three more from there to get to this point here. Yeah, but how did you get that point? How did you go up by three? How did you notice it by three? Well, I just noticed the pattern, okay? Every four hours, this person makes three, let's say, bowls, right? Another four hours, another three bowls. Another four hours, another three bowls. Another four hours, another three bowls. And so on. Probably pretty intriguing. Could you just make a tree? Could it be like, um, every four hours, 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 The change in y is three, both positive, positive four, positive three. Tyler? I saw that you made like little four by three triangles. No. Was that a question? Triangle <laughs> means uh, change. This is a Greek letter. Four by four triangles. Are you talking about this triangle? Yeah. That's <laughs> okay. What about it? You can make triangles out of it, right? Sure. Like you can just you can go. Like you go over four, like go, no, go back, yeah, right there. Go over yeah. four. Over four or more? Yeah, right there, and yeah. then go up three from there. Yes. Nailed it. All right, I understand now. Okay. I understand. 
Now, you could just say, hey, look at this fraction, and there you go. The reason why I phrase it the way I did from the beginning of class and why we've been writing these stories and all that kind of stuff is so that it is not just look at those numbers and here we go. It is, okay, this makes sense because what I really have here is not just negative 2 means a point goes on the y-axis down to negative 2. No, it means that if I plug a 0 in for x, I get negative 2 for y at the very least. Okay? Or if I wrote a little story about it, if zero hours go by, I am starting out with negative two dollars, negative two cakes, negative two, I don't know. All right. It could be negative two bowls because uh, you have orders for two bowls, and you have to make those right before you can even start to have a positive number of bowls. Right. That could be a way that you could look at it. And every four hours that go by, I make three bowls. Okay? So after four hours, I've made three bowls. All right, I made those two that I needed to make for the orders that I was backed up on, and now I'm one ahead of the game, and I just have one to sell. And then I can just keep working. Four more hours, three more bowls, four more hours, two more bowls, and so on. Okay. I like bowls and hours because well, like we just did the classic three-fourths dollars per hour. It's a terrible number of dollars to make per hour. Every four hours, you make three dollars. Right, let's give it another go. You'll notice there's a, a negative there. So we make it into a positive? No. You can't just change negative numbers into positive numbers. We could start with zero for x, and if we put zero for x, we get three. Three. Zero for x, and we get three. Knowing that this is going to be a line, we know we just need two points, and there's a really easy one to find. Hey, it's a negative. Zero <coughs> three, it is not. No, it's not. <laughs> zero times five eight. Sorry. Carry on. All right, and I could put it a one, sure. I could put it a two. All these are going to still leave me with a fraction. But if I go all the way to Clint, eight. eight yeah. Okay, then I know I'm going to cancel out the denominator. Let's let's show that work there. We got a negative five eighths times eight. Well, 8 divided by 8 is 1. That's nice. No more denominator or a denominator of 1. So it's 5. Oh, it is eight, negative, eight, five. negative 5, right? <coughs> negative 5. Because we have negative 5 eighths times positive 8 over 1. That's going to be a negative times a positive and a negative. So we got 1, 1, 1. So negative 5 times 1 divided by 1 is negative 5. Plus 3, negative 2. So 8 gives us negative 2. So what do you notice about this line? It's going like this instead of like this. It's going like this instead of like this. Like this, like this right? Instead of like this. As, as we go up in the x's, we go down in the y's. Right? The y's go down as the x's go up. So does it really matter? I don't know what that means. Alright. Does what really matter? Does anything really matter? I guess no. No, I don't think life matters. Shut up. <laughs> School matters. What's your question, Kyle? Never mind, never mind. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. So I can do all the work, I can plug those numbers in, but I could also say that, that I, if I were to plug in an 8, I know that I would cancel out this denominator, it would just leave me with negative 5, and I'd go down 5 from where I was at 3, right? So I could go over 8, one, two, one, one, two, 8, down, 1, 2, 4, 5, and there I am at 8, negative 2. Over 8, and down 5. Because it's negative, Right? It's like driving in reverse. It's like losing money over time. It's like dropping bowls and breaking them rather than making them. Right? Nice we are losing things as time goes on. So as we move up the x's, the y's go down. But once you just move, if you're going the other way, so if you go across. The other way, like to the left? <coughs> What's that? Yeah, if you go to the left, you're going up, which is kind of like going back in time and then seeing the, like, the, the broken pieces of the bowl go back together 
and back into the person's hand, like, like, so like, yeah, so undoing that loss. So it would be eight. We go eight. We go eight and then reverse. Then I go back eight, then we go up five. Instead of going forward eight and down five, we can go back eight and up five. All right, let's see if my graph is good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, right on. There. So if this was a graph of like somebody losing five dollars every eight hours, if we go back in time eight hours, we'll see that they used to have five dollars more than they have now. We're going back in time. How about some tape because this keeps falling off? Do you remember on Friday? Uh, oh, never mind. Do this first, and then I'll talk about Friday. Another one. Another one. Okay, what's one point that we can see pretty quickly, Bridger? Zero and eight. Zero eight. Zero for x, right? That's canceled out completely. We get an eight. Zero eight. Seven and negative six. So, mm -hmm. so it's no, positive six. Positive oh, six. Positive six. So we go over seven. seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Once I get all the way out to seven, I'll know that I, I've been losing a little bit and a little bit and a little bit and a little bit. And I've lost two. <laughs> By the time I've gone over seven, if I go over another seven, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven. I know I'll lose another two. And if another seven goes by, then we'll lose another two. If we go, like Kyler said, back seven, which is right there, if we go back seven, well, then we'll go back in time and see where we had before. If we were losing it over time, we'll go back in time and see we had more before. And if we go back then, we had more. So. We found far more than enough points. We just needed two. We found it. We found it four. No, the wrong word. Found four instead of just two. There we go. And then we, we plotted it an infinite number. So it could be pretty much go back over to the So it could be pretty much you go over seven down two. Exactly. Huh? Yep. Oh, so it's that pretty much all the problems that you can just look at that instantly and be like, wow, you can just go over. Mm -hmm. Sweet. You can, but I don't want you to lose the knowledge that what's really happening is when I go over to seven, I'm really looking at what happens when x is seven, right? The sevens cancel, and I'm up to negative two plus eight, and I'm at six. So I drop down two from eight, and I'm down to six. But yes, if I wanted to quickly draw this, I'd say, all right, zero goes in, eight comes out. When I go over to seven, I'm going to go down two, and so over seven, down two. Okay. Remember when we were uh, messing with these guys mm -hmm. here and drawing graphs? Okay. I think I did, but I don't remember if I asked you. Do you think that in graphing these, that the graph would ever go down? No. Why not? Oh. That would be that the water would go down. So. We would see a loss in the amount of water, the height of water, right? What what would we have to see over here for there to be a loss of water? A hole in it. So if there was a hole in this thing and water was spilling out. What's that? Then you use duct tape. So if there's a hole in it, then we could see the graph go down. The level of water would go down. Okay. And we would see this downward trend over time. Uh, so if our graph looks like this, if it looks like a line that's going up like this, what kind of rate of change do we have? No rate of change. It's constant. A constant rate of change? As opposed to this rate of change? It's going down. Still, but what kind of rate of change do we have here as opposed, opposed to this rate of change? That one's upward and that one's downward. We see a gain and then we see a loss up and down, yeah. Like, here's one that goes down. 
here's when it goes down. There's when it goes up, and there's when it goes down. What's the difference in the rates? Remember how we said that the, the three force is the slope. It's the rate of change. It's the vertical change over the horizontal change. It's the delta y over delta x. What kind of rate of change do we see in this equation compared to this one? That one's negative. That one's negative. Right, so we've got a positive and we've got a negative. Right. Here we have a negative rate of change, a negative slope. Right. So this has a positive rate of change, slope, delta y over delta x. I'm just saying the same thing over and over. Okay. So rate of change, slope, delta y over delta x, change in y over change in x. And this kind of uh, rate of change is what? Negative. negative. A negative rate of change, a negative slope. What about this guy? Equal rate of change. Lateral rate of change. What kind of rate of change do we see here? Equal. What do you mean by equal? No change. It doesn't change. That's what you mean by equal, right? At all times we have the same amount. Like what if the graph of your uh, of, the, of your cylinder looked like that? Mm. It would be a super small cylinder. No, it wouldn't be a cylinder. What if that was the graph of your cylinder? What would that mean is happening? Oh, it just stay up there. There's no water going in, no water coming out, no change, no change. Zero change, zero rate, zero slope, zero change. Here, let's look at two points on the graph, right? On these graphs. I see a, a negative change, right? For every seven that I move over, okay, so that tells me that the horizontal change is seven. I go down two, that tells me that the vertical change is negative two. And I look at this. I look at the change in y over the change in x. What's the change in y? Zero. Zero change in y. What's the change in x? Doesn't really oh, matter. zero change. There is no change in x. Well, from here to here, there is a change in x, but the thing is, it, well, doesn't it doesn't go up or down. It doesn't go up or down, so there's just some number here, right? What's zero divided by anything? Zero. Zero. So it doesn't matter how much of a change in x I look at. There's no change in y. No change at all. Okay. How about this? Here we have this line that's vertical. What's the rate of change there? Super fast. Like, Faster than anything possible because it's really, flat. like, what if that was the graph of your cylinder filling up? So that's pretty much like you're dumping it, some water into it, and it's just going straight up. Yeah, but it still have to it's still like it'd be a very steep slope, but it's still half the No, like the there bottom's would. cut out though. No. It's like it's like like the Prometheus board, you know, it's like all at once. Like all the pixels, just boom, they're all there at once. Yes. Yeah. So this would be like. The thing is filling up, and it has every height of water all at once, which is impossible. It can't be like half full and all the way full at the same time. Right. Like a flashlight turning on, a light turning on. All the light comes on. Unless the light has to like, like flicker. So to, for this to happen, then it would it'd almost be like just you have to teleport the water into the yeah. thing. Yeah. It would almost have to do yeah. that. I think the only thing that's possible to do that is light. Light. But I think it would still have a tiny. It would. It would still be very, very tiny because light is not instant, even though to us it seems mm -hmm. that way. But so this is just because we're kind of trying to figure out a way to make something that's impossible possible. You can't have a, a beaker be zero full and all the way full and even more than full all at once. Okay. So this is what you call an in, let's say it's an impossible slope. It's it's not even a slope. Like for a slope to be an actual slope. It would have to be slightly slanted, but this is vertical. This is what we call an undefined slope. Just not possible. Because let's look at the changes. The change in y versus the change in x. Between these two points, what's the change in x? Zero. And that's in the denominator of our slope. And now it doesn't really matter what our change in y is, whether it's 7 or 7 million. We still see zero change in x. So this is saying that our thing can go from half full to all the way full in zero seconds, which we can't. It's got to take on every value in between somehow. So dividing by zero in math 
is what we call undefined. You can't do it. There are a few things that are undefined. That's one of them. You can't divide by zero. We still haven't figured it out. I don't think we ever will figure it out. Bridger? Is there anything in the universe that instantly is just there? Because light, it actually does take time. There's this thing called quantum entanglement where two different pieces of a thing that used to be together is one thing, but you split them apart. If you spin one this way, the other one spins the opposite way at exactly the same time. Uh, but that I barely can even say those words and, and, and know at all what it means. But yeah, there is some instantaneous stuff. It's pretty weird. Um, wait, so even if you were to teleport something, wouldn't um, it have to like still take a little bit of a, even a fraction of a second to get from point A to point B. Yeah. So wouldn't that still be and the thing really is like if, if at one instant it was empty and then at the next instant it had this much water in it, it's still, it's still just one level of water. So the graph would look more like this. Nothing, 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 halfway full, right? And then maybe stay halfway full or maybe fill up some more. But if we just teleport some water in there, we have a measured height. Right? So we just need that. Uh, that's good. Um, how about y equals 5 is going to be a horizontal line? Because I want you to think about this. So a lot of times people want to put a vertical line like this. They want to put a line right here. Okay? But let's look at this point on the line. Forget about what x is. What is y for that point? Uh, is y equal to 5 at that point? Yeah, yes. Does, does that make this equation true? Yes. Does it really matter what x is? No. Uh, there's no place for x to even go in this is what, What's the y value at this point? Five. And this one? Five. So when y equals 5, we have this horizontal line at every point where y equals 5. Where y equals 5. And so likewise, negative. Negative 3. The other point on that line? X equals negative 3. So x equals negative 3 is a. I didn't mean to put slope here. Is a. Wait, can that be, can it be positive? Well, it could, but then I have a line over here, positive. Oh, yeah, sorry, I get it now. Okay. And as a last little thing, can you tell me what the slope of this line is? It is a positive slope, so that's where we're going to end down here. It's positive, something over something. Remember, it's a change from one point to another point. Uh, nine, 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 four. Four, four nine. Remember vertical change, horizontal change. Vertical change, horizontal change. If I'm up there. Wait, which one? This up to there. So two, chapter 2.1, 24, chapter 2.2 up to 12.